Greetings, everybody. Scary Spikes here, and we're currently aboard the RSI Polaris. So welcome aboard. It's been a long time since I made my last video. And I decided I was going to come back briefly with a bang. So here we are. This is Alpha 3.24.3. And as I mentioned, we're currently on board the RSI Polaris in low orbit over Ariel in Hurston. Gonna take a few minutes to introduce you to the ship, walk you around, show you what it has to offer, and hopefully hear some of your thoughts below. If you're a new player and you're looking to get into free fly, which you'll be able to do as part of the IAE 2954 celebrations coming later this month, please consider using my code to get me to 500 referrals, which I'm only two referrals away from. You'll get 5,000 extra UEC for your troubles which will help you on your own journey in Stanton. So without further ado, let's get it started. So this will be your main ingress and egress point on the ship. So the Polaris was created by Robert Space Industries for the UEE Navy to be a patrol vessel, but it's also used by civilian militias for patrol, search and rescue, strike missions, and a variety of other military or special operations. We're currently standing on the bridge, which has a nice open concept design, just something that RSI is known very well for. We have a number of seats here, which all suit different roles, as this is definitely a multi-role ship. In the center, we have the captain's seat, in the captain's seat, we have access to a couple of MFDs, but we're not able to fly the ship from here. Up front, we have a couple of seats, one on the left, one on the right, and these are pilot seats. You'll be able to fly your ship from here. I generally fly from the left side, although you could fly from the right. Further back, we have some flight engineer stations, two to be precise. And these will be crew that will assist you with managing ship systems, such as shields, coolers, and potentially also weapons. Moving further back of the flight deck, we have our cartography section. This is currently not operable, but it will be at some point in the future. And this is what's going to allow you to chart your course among the stars using this console here. Moving aft of the flight deck area, we have our escape pods. Some of these will be for the crew working on the bridge. Others will be for the gunners, which will be in the seats that we'll see in a moment. Moving further back, we have our main elevator access. There's several other elevators in the ship as well. We'll have a look at those later. Directly opposite from the elevator is a small armory with enough space for 10 small arms as well as some larger firearms or launchers and the same amount of suit lockers. Further down, we have a comfortable bench and plenty of space. In many areas of the ship, you'll be able to choose your lighting as well. And we can start with standard lighting. Auxiliary lighting. Or if you're feeling spicy, emergency lighting. Moving further back, we have the captain's quarters, which is currently not accessible because it's being reworked. Presumably, from what I've heard, this will be made available on RSI Day during the IAE 2954 celebrations, so stay tuned for that. 
Right across from there, we have a fuse box. This will be part of engineering gameplay. And we should expect to see that in patch 4.0, hopefully later this year, alongside Pyro. Further back, we have a pair of doors leading to our first two turrets. There are five total on the ship. Two on the port side, two on the starboard side, and one on the lower deck at the aft end of the vessel. We have one of many fire extinguishers on board, which again will be used as part of engineering gameplay. And further back, we have some of the more pleasant areas of the ship to relax in. The first of which being the mess hall. Opposite the mess hall, we have an entry to the hallway that stores the various bunks for the auxiliary crew rest areas. Each of these rooms will have two bunks, a bench, ample storage and lighting, and an ensuite bathroom with working mirrors, except you won't be able to see your helmet unless you cycle your camera. We've got a sizable sink and the typical Shoyla combo that we've been used to from RSI ships for a while now. Another fuse box can be found here. There's plenty of space for all the crew, 12 in total. And there's even space for a second in command or a fighter pilot should you have a fighter in the hangar, which we'll explore a little bit later. The hangar can be found here, although it has four different entrances and this is just one of those. And flanked by that are a pair of doors that allow for ladder access in case of an emergency where lifts don't work. Opposite this door leading to the ladder access, we also have the door leading to the mess hall on the other side. Let's walk down the port side of the ship where we'll have access to one of two docking collars. If you want to take this ship to a station, you will need to dock it as there are no hangars available. At first, I was a little upset that there was no dedicated airlock, but then I realized that this room is the airlock. It's quite big, and of course, it's a capital ship, so that makes sense. Running up the stairs and to the opposite end, now the starboard side of the ship, and we have an identical stairway leading to another docking collar. That's on the starboard side of the ship. Moving further down, again on the starboard side, flanking the hangar, which is to my right, is going to be a second door. Mirrored symmetrically on the port side, our second set of turret seats for our man turrets. And we do have dedicated escape pods here for folks working on the turrets, or perhaps in the hangar. Continuing down the starboard side, we have our second entrance to the hangar. And we have our brig. 
This brig is a lot nicer than some habitat modules on other ships. So any criminals that you drag in here will be living in relative luxury until you arrive at a station where they will be locked up proper. The brig offers two rooms with very good visibility for the guard. Very accommodating for criminals, I must say. We do have a stainless toilet and sink combo. Fairly nondescript, but it seems a very comfortable bed and some decent lighting all around. Whoever is in charge of watching these filthy criminals is also going to be able to see them on a pair of working screens because we have cameras in each of the rooms as well. There's a short hallway here with not much to speak of. And another door leading further aft. Walking past the hangar now. We have a terminal right here next to an elevator, which will take you down to the engineering level and the cargo bay. We'll check this out later. Let's check out the other side of the ship first. We have another entrance to our hangar. This is the aft entrance. And we're now moving to the port side of the ship again. Another staircase going down into the engineering area where the grav generator is. We'll have a look at that in a moment as well. We have our fairly empty hallway that we had on the other side of the ship. Moving further down, we have our fourth of four entrances to the hangar, which I promise we're getting to. Right across from that, we have our medical bay. Medical on the Polaris is fairly modest. It's not exactly a medical ship, but there's plenty of space here for four crew members, which is a third of what the ship is capable of housing. So we have four beds and four terminals with a station for a caregiver, be it a nurse or doctor or somebody else. You can, of course, imprint yourself to the med bay so that if anything were to happen and you meet your untimely demise, you'll be able to regenerate on the ship. Unlike the brig, it doesn't appear that we have any cameras in these rooms, or at least that they're not working at the moment. But we have two terminals here for the operator in the medical section, presumably to allow them to take care of any patients and monitor them remotely. So before we go further back into the ship, let's go ahead and have a look at the hangar finally. The hangar is capable of storing a small fighter or any utility vehicles that you would like to take along with you, but you'll need to drop them off through the top end of the ship. It does appear that there is a shield covering this opening as well, so of course anyone who's in here, even if the ship is under fire, will be fairly well protected. Let's move further back into the bowels of the ship and have a look at some of the other decks and features.
the stairs flank either side of the elevator that we saw just a moment ago. And this elevator will stop in this engineering area where we have an engineering console overlooking the rest of the engineering area on the ship. There are a number of various consoles in this room that are currently not operating, but will presumably allow a number of people to access engineering functions on the ship and help you to continue to keep it running. I really quite like how this thing looks like a nuclear reactor. Before we take that elevator down, let me show you what awaits you behind this area here. We have another fuse box. And then just around the corner, we have our grav core. Behind the grav core, we have some additional components behind this door. The animations here look fantastic. Everything is very meticulously done. And it definitely looks like what you would expect on a capital ship. As we've discussed before, engineering is coming soon. And here's yet another engineering terminal that will be online during 4.0. Next up, let's check out the cargo bay. Some stuttering with the elevator. Hopefully that'll be fixed at some point in the future. And going through this area, you would expect to see the cargo bay, but of course, this is engineering. Walking through the rest of the engineering area will lead us eventually to the cargo bay, but I do wish the signage was a little bit more deliberate, letting you know what part of the ship you're going to be going into next. There appear to be three engineering terminals on either side. Again, this ship is quite symmetrical in nature, which really appeals to my OCD. The walkways, stairs, and even exterior features of the ship are very well lit. And there's a lot of nice fine touches that really add a lot of atmosphere. Finally, this is our cargo bay. We have about 756 SCU, or standard cargo units of storage available here. Some of that is currently being taken up by our Ursa medevac. Of which we could probably fit several in here. Now we're out in space, so I'm not going to be opening up these doors, but you have some buttons on either side that will allow you to open these up. And you'll have a very long and robust ramp that will extend from either side to allow you to load ground vehicles and cargo. You can have one open at a time, or both, it's up to you, but you have to open them each individually unless you want to open the exterior from the flight deck. Before we move over to this area of the ship, let's go ahead and talk about the elevators that you have back here. There are two elevators. This is what it looks like when it is stowed away in the cargo area, and this is what it looks like when it's up in the hangar. These elevators will help you to load things up into the hangar and move things between ground vehicles, the cargo bay, and potentially any ships in the hangar. You should know that while these do work correctly with your player model, they do not work correctly with ground vehicles. 
So if you try to park any small ground vehicles on either of these elevators or this elevator here, they're going to collide through the surface and potentially get stuck depending on their size. Hopefully this gets fixed soon. Moving further back, we have this large loading elevator, which will take your load all the way up to the torpedo room. This lift can be operated by the button on the side. And there is a staircase flanking the elevator on either side as well. We also have more fuse boxes. There's quite a few of these on the ship. Another look at the cargo bay quickly before we head into the torpedo room. These aren't your standard torpedoes. They are size 10 capital ship killers. We can have as many as 28 on board. This is your main elevator, the one that we use to access the ship from the outside and of course to access the top level of the ship where the bridge was earlier on in the video. And a little further back we have our torpedo loading room with engineering consoles on either side. Suffice it to say, these things are quite big and very awesome. You can fire all of these at once. So that's something to keep in mind, although for all but the biggest ships, you probably won't need to. A little further back is a little cubby where we have yet another fuse and a fire extinguisher. And finally, our last manned turret. I hope you enjoyed this look at the RSI Polaris, and I'm curious to hear what you think. It's probably my favorite ship now in the game. For those of you who have watched my channel for a long time, you've probably remembered that my favorite ship of all time was the Carrick. And I didn't think a day would come where that throne would be taken away from it. But here we are. As always, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Although I'm not very active with this channel at all lately as I have another project that I'm working on. I'm definitely active on Discord and happy to respond to any questions that you might have. I've also been playing Star Citizen quite a bit lately, so if you'd like to get into the game with me, drop me a line below or join our Discord and we'll go from there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.